Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with the floor function and the ceiling function. So you'll remember the floor function from other videos. We've done quite a few problems and I just included a couple bullet points here for your reference for the ceiling function. So in other words, the ceiling function is basically defined as the uh, rounding up operation. So in the floor value, remember we always round it down. Like if you have the floor value of 3.14, then it's going to become a three. If you do the same thing with the ceiling, then you're going to be rounding up instead of rounding down, and that'll be a four, okay? And so these bullet points, pretty much the first one says the same thing. You've got to be careful because with the floor, remember the lower value is always n. In this case, it's n minus one. It's a little different for the ceiling function, okay? And it's also interesting. Second bullet point is also fairly interesting because it allows you to relate the floor value of a value, the floor value of x, for example, or negative x, with the ceiling value of the same variable. So in this case, you can safely say that, you know, for example, take 3.14 again as an example. Uh, if you take the opposite of the 3.14, that's going to be negative 3.14, and then its floor value is going to be negative 4, as you know, because you're supposed to be rounding it down, right? And in this case, you're talking about the ceiling value of 3.14, which is four, and their sum is always zero. Okay, so given those, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So we do have the floor of x over two is equal to the ceiling of x over three. So as almost all the time, we're gonna set this equal to an integer n. So in this case, we know that n is an integer, and we're gonna try to solve for possible values of n. Of course, our goal is to find x, but we also need to know our boundaries for n. Okay, so using the first part, which is the, the floor function, let's go ahead and write down what we have. So since the floor of x over 2 is equal to n, this implies that x over 2 is between n and n plus 1. Now remember that on, on the lower side, we always have the equality, and the lower number is always n with the floor function. On the other side, with the ceiling, it's a little different. Things are a little different because what you're supposed to do is you have to put the n minus 1 here with no equality and you have to put the n on the other side with the equality. Because remember that if a number is an integer, then its floor value or the ceiling value is always going to be the same number. Okay? So, now how do you put these two together? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, isolate x in these inequalities. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides, or I should say everything by two. So that should give me something like 2n x and 2n plus two. And the second inequality, if, you mu if I multiply everything by three, you get 3n minus three with an x in the middle and 3n on the right hand side. Okay, great. So we kind of have like two double inequalities and we've got to solve these. But remember that n is always an integer. And one of the th strategies that we use for these kinds of chain of inequalities is that we take the lower value from one of the inequalities and we take the higher value from the other one and we compare them. Obviously, x needs to be greater or equal to this and less than that. Therefore, the upper limit or upper boundary needs to be greater than the lower boundary in this case. Okay, so we can safely say that 2n needs to be less than 3n, okay? And this implies that n is greater than 0. If you go ahead and isolate n on one side, you're going to get that n is equal to, I mean, n is greater than 0. This shows that n has to be positive, which also means that x needs to be positive, right? Obviously. How about the second one? For the second part, we're going to be doing something similar, obviously, right? We're going to be comparing this one and this one. And this tells us that 3n minus 3 needs to be less than 2n plus 2. And what does that imply? If you subtract 2n from both sides, that's going to give you n is less than 5. Great. So remember that both of these have to be true. So we're going to look at the intersection. And also n is an integer. What is that supposed to mean? This means that n is between 0 and 5. Okay, and that's not inclusive. n is an integer, so n can be 1, 2, 3, or 4. Let's take a look at each case because each case is going to give us 
interesting results and let's go ahead and explore what happens. So I'm going to be looking at it each case separately and we have to be very careful. Now, if n is equal to 1, what happens, right? Okay, so if n is equal to 1, I'm going to go ahead and substitute my value for n here and here. Then I'm going to look at the intersection of those two inequalities. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing all the time, okay? So if n is equal to 1, then I should be getting something like, well, x is between 2 and 4 and between 0 and 3. Okay, if you look at the intersection of these two inequalities, you're going to notice that x needs to be between 2 and 3 inclusive. So that's what we're going to get from the first value of n, which is n equals 1. Okay, let's take a look at n equals 2. If n is equal to 2 and you substitute that into the inequalities that we have, we're going to be getting something like this, 4 and 6 here and 3 and 6 here. Notice that these two numbers are always three apart, and these two numbers are always two apart. These are two apart, and these are three apart. That's basically going to repeat over and over. And obviously, if you look at the intersection, you're going to notice that x needs to be between 4 and 6, but it can also equal 4, but not equal 6. Okay. And then we're going to be looking at n equals 3. If n is equal to 3, then x needs to be between 6 and 8 and 6 and 9. All right, this means that x needs to be between 6 and 8, but not inclusive. All right, and finally, we're going to be looking at n equals 4. Let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us 8 and 10 here. And on the other one, we're going to be getting 9 and 12. Obviously, every time, the lower boundary is also increased by 3. So that's going to be 9 and 12. And the intersection of these two inequalities is going to be between 9 and 10. None of them are going to be inclusive, okay? So we basically got two, four inequalities. Now notice that x in this case can be an integer sometimes. For example, x equals 2 is an integer solution, 3 is an integer solution, 4 is an integer solution, obviously 5 is an integer solution, and 7 is an integer solution. Those are all the integer solutions. And if you go back to the problem, you're going to notice that you can substitute and verify those. But not only that, it's also going to be four of these inequalities. So, but how do you combine them? We're just going to be putting an or between those. So our solution set is going to look like this. X is going to be between two and three, or X is going to be between four and six, or X is going to be between six and eight, or X is going to be between nine and 10. So those are all possible solutions for our equation. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know, comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.